We've had seven EpiPens into her, rushing her to the hospital where she's passed out. She got bit by a box jellyfish and drowned. And she's also had one or two bad falls where she had to be medevaced out. There's no telling what type of trouble she's gonna get herself into. I don't even know which life I'm on anymore. I think it's 2,900. <laughs> on New Year's Eve, we were sitting there waiting for friends to arrive for a party, and he goes, we really need something we can do together. And I said, yes, we do. And he said, what if we get like a little Miata and start doing some track days? So that was how it began. But Eileen doing a great job. You know, I think she's certainly going to be a player in what Amanda was doing. I was working six and a half, seven days a week uh, for my company. She just started with the CCR series, uh, racing uh, Ferrari Club Challenge. And I remember this vividly as I was on a racetrack in a break and received a phone call from a doctor. I was first diagnosed with neoendocrine cancer in May of 2017. Several years, we were going up to see a facility up in Maryland, uh, close to where we lived up in Baltimore because she wasn't feeling well, and we'd go up there routinely, and we couldn't find the root cause of her issues. There was just a list over 15 years. I had what they always thought was IBS, and then they told me I had a stomach ulcer. Then they told me I had some intestinal disorder and stomach disorder. And at one point, one doctor up in Baltimore told me that it was psychological and I just needed to get out of my own head. We had a friend suggest coming down to Mayo Clinic here in Jacksonville. And I was like, I'll do one last time, but this is it. I, I'm done after this. I, I don't want to see another doctor. <laughs> His name was Dr. Stark, and he's one of the few that do this colonoscopy that goes all the way up into the ileum, which is an area that you typically don't get from the, the endoscopy and the colonoscopy. There's a, there's a void. Within a few days of testing, they were able to uh, find the, uh, the tumor. He said, yeah, you have a tumor in your ileum, and we want to go ahead and schedule you for surgery. My daughter flew down. Um, I had the surgery. They took out 28 lymph nodes in my abdomen, and several of them were cancerous. I decided at that point in time in my life that it was time to put everything aside. Within the next uh, eight months, uh, sold the business, tuned my schedule down quite a bit so I could do more activities with her, travel, and everything once she uh, completed the operation. I started out the first six months wonderful. They were running tests and, you know, doing follow-up and checking and things like that. And my blood work came back a little skewed. And they did a PET scan. And they saw two spots on my lungs and two spots on my liver. They explained it to me that it's on a very molecular level and it's a very slow growing cancer. And what you're dealing with is the hormone that this produces. I get two shots every four weeks. They hurt really badly. <laughs> I'm sick for two good days afterwards, but then I have 28 good days. 
I can do the things I want to do. I can enjoy my grandson. I can enjoy time with my husband and my children and my friends. And I can still race cars. Every track is unique and different and challenging. Daytona is iconic. It is a combination of road course and oval at the same time. This weekend is super special for me because my grandson is coming down with his au pair and he will be with me all weekend. This will be the first time he's actually been able to see me race in person. Super excited, the team made a special little jacket for him. The team is amazing. I mean, this is just one huge, huge family. Everybody is so sweet and caring and loving and high five and how you doing and it's, it's amazing. I, I love it. Most people have their share of bad days. We've had more than our share. I do a lot of things because I know it's something my son would have been proud of. Two o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call. I sat up in bed and I found out that my son had been shot. I don't know why when I got that phone call, I knew, but I had that horrible feeling when you you just know that something is wrong with your child. We got to Washington Hospital Center and he was indeed um, on life support. And the only reason he was on life support was for organ donation. I wanted to go to bed and stay there forever. My daughter wanted to do the same. It was a tough road. We did survive. We got Colleen back in college. We went through a lot of counseling. We learned how to become a very close family, and we learned how to pull each other up. My car, there's a lot of underlying subliminal kind of messages in the wrap on my car that have to do with my son, Kevin. And when Max was born on my son's birthday, <laughs> literally within an hour of each other, I knew that this was another gift that he gave us. My son, Kevin, was a caring, giving, loving child. He, he was, even as an adult, and he was always so kind and the person that came in the room and was funny. And now Max, he, um, he reminds me of my son and I don't want to compare him or to think that he's ever taking my son's place, but I feel like it was a gift. And for that, we're, we're very thankful. She used to be able to get in a car and do an eight hour day now she's getting in a car and doing a three to four hour day. You can tell that the cancer is definitely taking a, a toll on her as she gets a little bit older. It makes you realize life is really short and you never know when that last day is gonna happen. What affects me more mentally than everything is, you know, what's gonna be the final outcome years down the road? You know, is this gonna last five years, 10 years, 20 years. Maybe we'll find a cure where uh, it will, you know, go away and we don't have to worry about it anymore. We just don't know where it's gonna go. We've all decided you live every day as though it could be your last and make the most of it, spending it with the people you love and care about and moving forward.